I'm surprised Guillermo even showed up today. Uh, well, why, from, uh, after for all work, the sex yeah. last night? Yeah, it was a busy night last night. <laughs> <laughs> nah, only one round. Only, only one, one round. round. <laughs> all right. Two rounds and he would have called in sick. Yeah. <laughs> Two rounds and we'd be at yeah. his funeral. You'd be reporting on it, yeah, I hope. Would at the end of the... We could use a new lead story. <laughs> yeah. Is this a good time or a bad time to be yeah. in the news business? It's a really slow time. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, this is what I tell people. I think there's no more important a time, actually, to be a journalist uh, than right now. I mean, we've all witnessed, what, the most bruising presidential campaign in our lifetimes. And, yeah. you know, every single day we go into the newsroom and we talk about the stakes, and they're, they're enormous. And, and we know that when we do the news every night, it's a divided America. You know, half the country feels as though they were finally heard, that this economic recovery that they couldn't get access to, they couldn't find a job, or their children couldn't advance further than they did. Uh, they think that they were heard, they took a chance. But then there are 65, 66 million Americans in this country who voted for Hillary Clinton who said, how on earth did this happen? And we have to find a way to let everyone know when they're watching that we hear them, that we're asking their questions on all ends of the spectrum, and that's not an easy task. And who makes up the fake news? Is, do you do that yourself, or yeah. is there a team yeah. of Imagineers? Yeah. Do you need help? Because I can come up yeah. with all sorts know, of weird I stuff. I know, I know. I watch your show. <laughs> <It's> uh, like... <laughs> anyway, you know, it is... It is it's it a is... team effort. Yeah. <laughs> I can join you anytime. But uh, honestly, people wake up I in this era with their iPhone next to the bed. They check the headlines the moment they get up. They get the tweets all day, your Instagram, your Facebook feed, which is essentially curated. Your news feed, it's called. But those are your interests, your likes. And so you often get the viewpoints that, that you're expected to get fed back to you. And I think there is a danger uh, when it comes to fake news, because there is some fake news out there. But there's also a danger when you only hear back to you the beliefs that you already have. Yeah, right. Uh, and so I would just encourage people, and we've seen the audience grow on the evening news in this era of social media when you'd think it would make it harder. More people are coming to us, and we're grateful they seem to be responding, but I know it has nothing to do with, you know, me or the incredible team, and more to do with this moment in history. And I think people do want to cut through the noise. They want straight shooters, and they want you to call people out when the facts are the facts. There's no such thing as, you know, alternative facts they're facts, and that's what we do every night. You got the first interview with President Trump as president, and how did that happen? Did, uh, obviously, everybody wanted an interview with him. Yeah. Did he, they contact you and say, yes, you're the organization we would like to go with, yeah. and we want David specifically, or how did that work? Yeah, he calls me up. <laughs> well, who, who would you know, be surprised no, actually, by that? I would actually expect a tweet. Yeah, I would actually expect a direct tweet. Direct message on Twitter. Uh, you know, these, ki <laughs> these kinds of interviews, obviously, everyone goes for. And, and, and we were honored when we got the call that, that he was going to go with ABC and that he had agreed uh, to allow me to come to the White House. And quite honestly, the moment you arrive at the White House, it's an honor to be there. It's an honor to sit across from whoever holds the highest office in the land. But in addition to the respect for all of that, I also had profound respect walking in, knowing where we are as a country, and that I had to ask what viewers at home wanted me to ask. I wasn't there to really create a comfortable situation, a comfortable moment with the president. And, and honestly, if you ask President Trump, I don't think he would say he would expect that either. And there, and there were moments, but you know, um, we, we put on an entire hour in prime time, let him speak, but we, we did press him on, on, I thought, key issues that people at home would I want I think you did a great on. job with him. And I think also it, did, it was uncomfortable at times, and of course it has to be uncomfortable at times. In fact, I think we have a clip here from that interview, and I do want to ask you about that. Let's run that clip. When you say, in your opinion, millions of illegal votes, that is something that is extremely fundamental to our functioning democracy, a sure. fair and free sure. election. Sure. You say you're going to launch an investigation sure. into this. Done. What you have presented so far has been debunked. It's been called well, false. It? I Take called, a look at the Pew report. I called the author of the Pew report last night, and he told me that they found no evidence really? of voter fraud. Really? Then why fraud. did he write the report? He said no evidence of voter Excuse fraud. Me. Then why did he write the report? So According to Pew report, then he's then he's groveling again. At this point, what's going through your mind as you now are in an, uh, an unwinnable argument with the well, president? It's interesting. You know, we do the sit down and then we were going to do the walk and talk, the tour through the White House afterwards. And I was thinking, I just lost the walk and talk. Uh, but, yeah. but he was gracious. We actually, he showed us a lot of the White House and the Oval Office. But you know, this is something President Trump feels strongly about. He told me in that interview that he will launch an investigation. We've heard from Republicans on Capitol Hill who don't seem eager to launch that investigation, but he's still convinced. But some do. Some say there should be an yeah. investigation. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure how many are convinced there are three to five million illegal votes. He believes that he won, would have won the popular vote instead of Hillary Clinton had it not been for millions of illegal oh, votes. Oh, right. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you enjoyed the video, hit subscribe. 
And if you don't click subscribe, this invisible hamster will die.